If you enjoy loud gatherings and being forced to accept gifts you know you'll never use, with a second serving of uncomfortable small talk, wash down with a nice glass of pass the phone, then this video isn't for you. For everyone else, welcome back. And if you're new here, I'm that autistic black man, and welcome to my channel where I talk about my experience as an autistic black man diagnosed at 42. The holidays can be tricky for some, depending on our relationship with our families. Some of us may be missing those who aren't here to celebrate with us. I'm sorry, this is gonna be silly, so let me, let me just, there we go. Okay. So some of us don't really come from a close family, but no matter what your situation, if you grew up in the United States, you saw the Christmas episodes of your favorite shows, you sang along with the jingle for the holiday ads, and you saw that Christmas was America's thing. I grew up living a double life from as early as I can remember. My mom started dating this man who would later become my stepdad. He was a member of this fine religious organization that only allowed you to communicate with other members of that culture. We would visit the worldly relatives the day before the big holiday or the day of, but we weren't to sing any of the songs or to accept any gifts. If someone said Merry Christmas, I was taught a script to communicate to them that we didn't celebrate pagan holidays for extra credit into God's good grace. Oh, to be a part of the 144,000. Sarcasm. I believe my tism went unnoticed because all my life I've been scripting and masking. That's another video for another day, so let's just stay on the topic of holidays right now. The holidays are always such a mixed bag of emotions. From the sudden politeness that comes over strangers to the random FaceTime calls from people that only think of you this time of year. Should I answer and give a fake smile? I know they don't really care to know what I've been up to and it's just formality. They promise that they'll make their way to the city to visit and we'll see a Broadway show together and I won't hear from them again until a year from now. Part of me feels good for being thought of but also remembers all the unanswered texts. My feelings with the holidays are mixed because there was a time before their marriage when I got the Hess trucks that you see advertised on TV. We decorated a Christmas tree and I even had a birthday cake at one time. I put my foot on my birthday cake trying to get out of my high chair. I don't remember that exactly, but there's a picture and the frosting happened to be blue. I wonder if that's the whole start of me liking blue colored foods. Coming from a family that felt more comfortable teasing you for not being able to receive Christmas gifts than they were for telling you they love you, I don't have too many great memories of the holidays. This was the same time of year when I was forced to answer a question of if I was gay over a family dinner. And that answer ultimately led to me learning that I'd have to find a new place to live. So yeah, mm, it's not really my thing. I've attended holiday dinners since then with friends and my in-laws. For the most part, it's cool, but it's a few people you can't pay me to be around, and if they're there, I'm not. For someone loving a black autistic man, and someone out there might be thinking, why does it have to be a black thing? Because I'm black, and before the world knows anything else about me, the first thing they see when they look at me, before any other labels or subgroups, I am a black man. My lived experience is of a black man. But for someone loving a man like me, it's important to know some key things about the holidays. First, this is new to all of us, and I might have all my favorite noise canceling headphones or some type of earplugs to muffle the sound. It's not that I don't wanna hear what you have to say, but too many sounds at once is overwhelming. If you ask me questions, please keep them simple and allow me time to answer. Don't ask me three long questions back to back and then as I start to answer, jump in with more questions. Don't start two conversations with me at once like a press conference fighting for a hot take. It will likely lead to an anxiety attack, which doesn't take long to turn into a meltdown. Let me decide how much touch I'm comfortable with during our time together. I might open my arms for a hug, or I might give you a smile and an elbow bump. I don't love you any less, and if you allow me to approach it how I feel comfortable in the moment, it takes away that awkward moment when you go in for a hug and I'm not really in the mood to be hugged. It's okay to invite me, but don't ask me repeatedly if I've already given a no. I understand you want my presence, and I really do appreciate you for thinking of me, but maybe I've already spent all my energy, or I only have enough energy for the event and not the hangover that I have to recover from the next day. And yes, hangout hangovers are real. Aside from the anxiety of the unknown of who's gonna be there and the scripting that I'm trying to unlearn, it's the hangover recovery. The hangover is the part I least look forward to and it's inevitable. The whole next day is just draining. I'm sitting there thinking about the conversations that I had the day before, what I could have said differently, and now I feel like I gotta put myself on vocal rest as if I had just battled Mariah D. Carey. So if you find that you don't hear from me for the next 32 hours after I've given you the text letting you know that we made it home, okay? Take this as your heads up. Here are a few tips that I have for you. These work for me, so maybe they may work for you. If you must go, know your limits. Don't overdo it, make a plan, and stick to it. Take breaks to be alone if you need to be, or if you have a favorite person that's gonna be there, stick close to them, but don't be too clingy and try to relax. Maybe silence your phone and make a whitelist for the day. That's pretty much self-explanatory, but just remember to keep a heads up for the delivery notifications. I forgot that once, and let me tell you, that dude was pissed with me. Create your own traditions. I personally like Chinese takeout and having a nightmare on Elm Street Marathon. Hey, 
Hey, you, hit that damn button down there and subscribe. Do that. It don't cost you nothing. You see these edits? Hit that like. You got me? What's something I left off the list that might be helpful for someone else? Let me know in the box below. I can't predict how my emotions will swing, but I do plan to lean in more and to show up with the things that I need to accommodate myself. Whatever you do, make sure that it fits you and your needs. And remember, it's just one day. Lastly, this is not a debate. Mint ice cream is